So I was in the process of getting out a breakdown of Operation Absolute Zero with the information we received from Treyarch, but here's the official trailer. Just dropped about an hour ago. Nice, okay. Here's your new specialist. Looks a little bit like the Outrider, not too much, but... Ooh, okay. Her equipment. Oh, so it's like an EMP. All right, all right. Activating disruptor. Awesome. I was a little confused as to her items, but okay, I get it now. Nice, nice. Oh, yes, here's Hijack. They they added that in perfectly. What a perfect spot to put the boat. Yes. Oh, the new vehicle. Oh, my God. Holy shit. That looks OP. Yes, that looks... I can't wait to obliterate people with that look at the new weapons here look amazing and it is confirmed you unlock these weapons through tiers so just grind the game and you'll get them it's not pay to win at all nice dude these camels and paint jobs are just insanely beautiful oh my god it's just like a spartan that looks amazing loving the new cosmetics though this is the these are the kind of cosmetics we need oh there's the priest on the ajax oh my god these are amazing Oh, the ice pick. Okay, it's your ability then. Ice pick online. Oh, that's really cool. That is amazing. Okay, so her middle name is EMP, to be honest with you guys. But yeah, that was an official trailer reaction to Operation Absolute Zero. Let's carry on with the actual video. What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and recently Treyarch included Firing Range Night and Seaside Sunset within our Black Ops 4 multiplayer maps, and I was kind of surprised with how people reacted to these maps when they were first found in the PC files, as people actually thought Activision would ruin their PR even more by allowing these maps to be covered by the 12 promised Black Ops Pass multiplayer maps, and we all know Activision's PR is under a lot of fire, not just with Black Ops 4, but many other releases this year and even last year as well. Black Ops 4 stability was quite frankly unacceptable at launch, and we all know it's because the game was rushed. It isn't necessarily Treyarch's fault. I don't know why the QA testers weren't able to do their job correctly with the game, but uh, it's a discussion for a different video. Now, I will talk about zombies a little bit more uh, in, in a separate video in terms of whether or not all future Ether maps will be remakes, but I think at least for multiplayer, Activision will not have the balls to absolutely obliterate their PR by saying that two of the promised 12 uh, Black Ops Pass multiplayer maps are going to be remakes, remasters, or these certain twists, as we've seen even in Black Ops 3, which uh, Treyarch experimented with, and we had those events like Operation Snowblind, Operation Swarm, where we saw Redwood Snow, where we saw Nightfall Fringe. Those are obviously the same maps with the same layout, just with a different aesthetic behind them or a different time of day, which I think worked out perfectly because when you change the setting of the map, when you change the time of the day, when you change the weather, it really changes how people play the map itself when it comes to objective modes, where they're hiding, where they blend in with. It changes the fundamentals of the map itself itself and I think it works out very well so I think in terms of free multiplayer content going forward that is the right way to go about it I don't think they'll necessarily release a free map maybe one at most but they will definitely never release actual new multiplayer maps for free in game I think that'll always be covered by some type of season pass but like I said I don't know why people were under the impression that Activision would actually release those kind of maps as part of the promised Black Ops Pass ones but let me know what you think of that down below in the comments the maps play out pretty well here in Black Ops 4, I'm looking forward to more twists on some of these OG multiplayer maps going forward because their experiment in Black Ops 3 really worked out. I think a lot of the things they did towards year 2 and year 3 of Black Ops 3's life was definitely an experiment for what they were going to do with Black Ops 4. Now, the main topic of this video is going to be about Operation Absolute Zero, which begins on December 11th first on PlayStation 4. Now, Operation Zero will be introducing our first new 
post-launch specialist known as Zero, a versatile and deadly hacker available in both multiplayer and blackout. So in multiplayer, Zero can disrupt and distract your enemies using the powerful hacking tools at her disposal, bringing new counteractive measures to the table in Black Ops 4. Players can unlock Zero by completing Tier 1 in the newly revamped Black Market and immediately start testing out her wonderful new toys. Now, Treyarch also announced there will be three new earnable multiplayer weapons in Operation Absolute Zero via the contraband tiers in the black market. These weapons include the Damon 3XB SMG, the SWAT RFT assault rifle, and the Secret Santa melee weapon. Now, notice how they said revamped tier system. I was almost going to make a video talking about how I wasn't a big fan of the tier progression system as I almost felt like it was a downgrade from Black Ops 3, but there are pros and cons to it since money is nowhere included in this tier progression system. What I mean by that is there isn't any RNG that's reliant on the COD points that you actually buy for supply drops. You literally just have to put in a lot of time in game. Now, while that's not the worst possible scenario, for a multiplayer progression system. I thought it was a bit absurd that we were required to put in at least six hours a day for a total of, I think it was three to four weeks straight, which a lot of us just can't do. We just don't have the time for that in order to hit it originally tier 200 in the first event that went live in Black Ops 4. But luckily there was a double tier progression system, which allowed all of us to honestly speed through a majority of the tiers while tier 200 was essentially everybody's goal in order to unlock Hudson in Blackout and they did give you the option to buy your way to the end but there was honestly no point the event lasted pretty long everybody had a decent amount of time to actually uh, get to tier 200 but luckily this new revamp system is only going up to tier 100 and these DLC weapons from what I understand in this post are going to be included within the first 100 tiers so I'm assuming tier 25 50 75 is when we'll be unlocking these three various DLC weapons. Now, in addition to all of that, there's gonna be new weapon camos, reactive camos, and reticules to unlock along the way. Now, players will also be able to actually access the new weapons right away in Blackjack's gun game, which is returning as a featured playlist first on PS4. And obviously we had this in Black Ops 3. After all of the DLC weapons came out in BO3, Blackjack's gun game was essentially just gun game with all DLC weapons. But since there aren't too many DLC weapons in BO4 yet, we'll obviously have some original weapons in Blackjack gun game when it releases next week. Now in terms of Blackout, I'll go over that real quick as well. On December the 10th, they're setting the stage with uh, several hotly anticipated updates to the core Blackout experience for all platforms including a new armor repair system, audio improvements, SDM and Spitfire weapon balancing, and seasonal changes across the entire map. Obviously, that includes the inclusion of, what is it, Hijacked from Black Ops 2, now in Blackout, which is absolutely insane. I could already imagine all the loot that's going to be scattered across that uh, pretty decent-sized map. It's about a medium-sized map, I would say. Not too big and not too small whatsoever, but definitely a fan favorite. They obviously brought it back in Black Ops 3, and along with that, we also have the confirmation that League Play has been unfortunately delayed until 2019, so more confirmation that the game was ultimately rushed just to compete with the sales of Red Dead Redemption 2. Very unfortunate for those of you who are looking forward to the competitive aspect of Call of Duty multiplayer. Now, they also have the new armored vehicle known as the ARAV, so you can hop in with a friend and light up your foes with its turret-mounted machine gun, which I think is absolutely insane. I was really looking forward to more of a lethal vehicle in Blackout, and I'm sure we'll see plenty over the course of this game's season and beyond. So it also says players can drop in as Zero after unlocking her or as one of the four zombie-killing gladiators from Nine after finding and completing the brand new set of Blackout Zombies character missions. So essentially, we're going to be seeing the Chaos characters again in Blackout except in their gladiator forms, each with their own character missions. Now, they also confirmed Ultimus 
for Black Owl. But so far, they mentioned them being unlocked via the new tier progression system. So they probably won't have character unlock missions using the various and random items across the map. Not too sure how I feel about that, but at the same time, less work for most of us who don't like going for those character missions. I certainly do. I think it's a really cool grind and extremely fun. It gives you something to go for when you play Black Owl. But we will, of course, have character missions for these gladiator characters. Now, Treyarch also made a quick statement saying, on top of the free content kicking off next week, there's even more coming to Blackout soon with the addition of custom games, weapon camos, stash interface updates on consoles, holiday map decorations, throwable snowballs, new seasonal special event tiers, in-game promos, gameplay improvements, and more, which sounds really, really exciting. Now, moving on to zombies. To go over this real quick, we're obviously getting daily callings, finally. We're also getting the Black Ops Authenticity Stamp System, which was also promised quite a while ago, which will be monitoring number of kills, deaths, downs, revives, headshots, map selection, game types, special weapons, perks, elixirs, numbers used, the match duration, score spent, final score, you guys name it. And they're also going to be incorporating a daily tier skip for zombies so they finally made the tier progression system universal which means your in-game time within zombies will now count and the way the daily tier skip works for zombies is by simply completing 15 rounds in one game of classic zombies each day for your daily bonus black market tier now this isn't a zombies exclusive tier system once again it's the universal system that essentially gives you more items for multiplayer and blackout than it does for zombies but they are working on bringing the various legendary camos and weapon kits to zombies very very soon so obviously weapon kits for the dlc weapons and these obviously the mastery camos for all our other weapons as well like dark matter diamond gold you name it so be on the lookout for that and they also talked about a winter calling event in zombies with new seasonal personalization rewards to unlock starting december 13th first on ps4 and they ended off this statement essentially by saying that factions and new seasonal event callings as well as phase two of the authenticity stamp system will be coming in 2019 so probably at some point mid-january possibly even february so as i also mentioned earlier the black market has been revamped obviously we have 100 clearly defined tiers as they say the new earnable weapons the new specialist unlocked new item categories more diverse content more master crafts the new blackout characters the shared war paints the reserves now starting at tier 101 instead of tier 201 as originally released and obviously the content changes and daily tier skips as we describe but that's about it for operation zero we were all expecting the new specialist to be either the outrider specter or the reaper but it seems like since those character models are already complete as the leakers have previously confirmed we'll obviously be seeing some new specialists first then we'll have those added in later but it's just kind of good news that they do have quite a bit of free specialist coming post launch and we might even see the black check again we never know the black check will be really interesting to play as in black ops 4 multiplayer as he was within black ops 3 but that's about it this has been dk dynamite and once again december 11th is when operation zero does begin we were all expecting a dlc1 trailer which they could still surprise us with this week but it seems like this massive update should keep us busy for a little while before we do see the first dlc zombies map there's no saying if when the first dlc zombie map releases that would also include three possibly four new multiplayer maps we just don't know but check all links down below in the description for more information and peace out everybody